Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Well, if you're the proud new owner of this beautiful Harley Benton guitar, then this is your guitar's video. Guitar, baby. Yeah, this Harley Benton right here has special meaning to me. This is the first brand new guitar I've ever owned. And I bought it before I had Mojo Shop Guitar. And I've never went through it. I've never done anything to it. I've done a couple of things to it, but nothing anything serious. And it's been a while. So it needs to be gone through. But this is a it's a personal guitar of mine, and it's, you know, it's something that I'd like to see passed on to someone who's going to give it a good home. And, man, if you're the new owner of this one, it's going to be something special. Let me show you what we did to it. And here we are over at the bench. Well, this guitar here, you know, I said I've, uh, I've had it for a few years. And uh, <clears throat> when I first got it, I was just getting into fixing up guitars and stuff like that. I was just kind of relearning to play and just kind of getting back into it when I bought this. And it, it, it put some excitement in my, in my, you know, in my guitar playing and stuff. You know, it was the first real nice guitar that I had that I ever had, you know, binding on it and was, you know, a curved top. It had a nice flame top and some, you know, some binding on the neck and, you know, just, it looked real nice. It looked, it was a lot like a, you know, like a regular Les Paul. And, uh, you know, it really is a good, solid guitar, but it ended up being where it's just a little heavy for me. I'm getting a little older, and I like them a little bit lighter. But the weight of it makes it more resonant. It makes it a little bit more more solid sound. And it just it makes it for a play like a different guitar. But the thing about it is, is uh, when, I, when I first got it, I went through it, and I put some really good parts in it. I put some CTS pots in there. I put a switchcraft switch in here and input jack and I went ahead and I switched out the uh, tuners on the top it had the old ones with the had the ones with the little clear sort of ends but I put some some they're not Grovers but they look like Grovers and they work real nice and oh and I also put a bone nut on there that's a that's a nice nut you know but when I first did all this stuff, I wasn't all that great at, you know, setting up a guitar. Do you know? I I'd done a few, but you know, I was still, uh, you know, getting started. But now that I've you know done quite a few more, uh, I, we're going to give this one another another go over and see where where it's at, how it's doing, how well we did the first time, how how much it's off, but we're going to get it spot on, so that every last note up and down this neck plays nice. It plays smooth. It plays easy. It sounds great. Everything is going to be right about this. So <laughs> your guitar is going to be awesome. I mean, you know, when 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 you get it, when you get it, it's going to be awesome. So let's get started on this. All right, be right back. Okay. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the strings off it. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, we got the strings off it, and we just decided to go ahead and take the tailpiece right off, right along with it, with the strings and everything. It just makes it that much easier. We're going to set that off to the side here. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and take this bridge off there. We're going to put, turn those screws all the way down. So now we're checking things to make sure everything is nice and solid, everything's about right where it's supposed to be. You know, those posts, those feel real good. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do, next thing I want to do is I kind of want to uh, inspect to see what these these uh, pickups look like. So let me take a look at those. All right. One of the things I wanted to know was what kind of re out output these pickups are giving me. So here we go. Uh, here's the the stock pickups that looks like 16.2, and then in the middle it's 5.6, can't hardly read it backwards in the camera. And then on the rhythm side, it looks like it's about 8.6. So 
Kind of low output, but not too bad. Let's see what the other ones look like. Alrighty, we have this other set of pickups that I had laying around. I think they were um, out of a fender or something like that. I think they were, I can't remember what the heck they were out of. But uh, <clears throat> they're the same size as a as the humbuckers that are in that Harley Benton over there. So in the same spacing on the poles and everything. So we're just going to go ahead and get these. And I want to test them and see what the what the output of these are. So let's see here. Put the ground on there and touch that to there. And it looks like this one here is about 10.13. Okay, so that's 10. So let's see what this other one is. Right here. See, this one's 15. So this one is a little bit not quite as hot as the other one. But this one is hotter. So I think that we'll go with these right here if they'll fit in there. And because they're going to have more of a smooth and blended range. It's going to be a little bit nicer, I think. So we're going to try those. Well, we got the old pickups out of it. And you can kind of see the cavity in there. As you can see, it's got a nice little little cap in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a nice little maple cap in there. And the inside of that really looks nice. It's got a nice neck joint. Nice finished up pockets. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put those the other uh, pickups in there. The nice fender ones. From a, I remember what it was from. It was from a Tornado. So they're pretty nice, pick, or pretty nice pickups. We're going to put those in. Okay, we got the uh, do pickups all in there, in there and everything, and now we're just going to give them a test. We got it hooked up to an amp, got it turned up, and we're just going to see, make sure the selector works and everything. So let's put it on the rhythm position. So we got live there, nothing there. In the middle, got both, and that's right for the treble. Now you may have noticed that we put those new uh, pickups in there a little bit different. I'm going to turn this amp off and get that unplugged here. All right. What we did here, maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. As you can see, we have the pole pieces on that. There we go. We got the pole pieces inverted so that we're going to be picking up more from the middle piece. That's what I want this to be. I want it to be more of a middle range type of guitar and I think that with the these being Fender pickups and put it in here like that I think it's gonna make it a nice little difference so we're gonna go with that right there so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we are going to um, level out the neck take care of the neck and everything so we'll be right back Okay, I was wrong. The next thing, we're not doing the neck. Well, we'll do the neck after this. But the next thing I want to do is one of those little secret things that we don't, that, well, I haven't seen too many other people do. In fact, I haven't seen anybody else do it. And what we're going to do is we are going to radius the screws right here on these pickups. Now, what I did is I measured the radius of this fretboard, which is it's a 14-inch radius, okay? put the radius tool on there so we figure out what radius it was. Now we're going to put the pickup screws at the exact same radius as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our little screwdriver out here and have just the right one right here and we're just going to take these ones right here down a little bit. In fact I think I'm going to get my other screwdriver. It works a little better. So basically, what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to take our radius gauge here, and we're going to put it across here, and we're going to measure right across here with our little slinky feeler gauge, and we're going to put it so that the tops of these screws are all exactly 14-inch radius. So we're going to go ahead and do that on both, on both of these pickups here. All right, well, it took a few minutes, but we got all these pole pieces right here 
perfectly in radius. See, you can take that feeler gauge, and this is our thinnest little paper feeler gauge. I mean, it's just nothing to it. And we see if we can get in between there, and we can't. It's equal all the way across, and we do that on this one too. Equal all the way across there. So, yeah, those are going to... that. And what we did is we were matching the radius with these screws to the radius of the fretboard and therefore to the radius of the strings. That way each string is, an, is the exact same distance away from the pickup. Now we can move on to the neck. Now I was just getting ready to button up the back of this after changing the pickups. But I wanted to show you that it's got these nice CTS pots in there. They say T CTS on them. And it's got the orange capacitors in there, and it is wired in the vintage, vintage wiring. So, it's going to have that vintage sound. Alrighty, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see how flat the neck is here. And, you know, you, you've seen these, you know, this kind of a, you know, straight edge. It has the notches in it and stuff, and you can stick it on there like that and, you know. Stick it on the wood. I, I don't do that. I stick it right. I take this straight edge here. This is a straight flat edge right here, and just put it right across the top because I don't really care about the wood, how flat that is, and how flat the, the frets are. So I'm going to set this across there, and I'll take this little tiny, real thin feeler gauge, and we're just going to kind of feel right across there. And I want it to be dead flat, and it is not. It sticks through everywhere. So we are going to tighten up our truss rod just a little bit so that we can get that take that little cup out of there so we're going to find the size that we need here let me see tell you what I got to find my wrench be right back Well, all right, we found the uh, <clears throat> Allen wrench to turn the truss rod, so we're going to put that in there right there. And we're just going to give it just a little tightening. It doesn't feel like it's tight at all. start to tighten up didn't have any tension on it whatsoever so what we're going to do is we're going to raise that up just a little bit like that right there okay let's get up in here and see how we're doing on the uh how we're doing still needs to come up quite a bit so we'll give a couple more turns yeah it was loosened all the way up that a whirl and you know what I'll do sometimes is when we crank it like that we'll give it a little kind of give it a little twist up like that because that's what direction we're trying to go so we'll try to twist it up a little bit okay let's give that a whirl see how we're doing now you just want to move a little bit at a time see now we're getting closer we're getting real close to being where we need to be And we'll we'll check the end. So we'll come around here where you can around here where you can see. Hey, now we're high in the middle. See that? Yeah, and then we get down the end. Well, not too bad. I'm going to give it just another little half a hair just for <clears throat> prosperity. That's it. Just a little snug of a snug. Let's see what it does there. Hey, somebody wants to be on the phone. Go figure. Yep, I like that right there. Okay. We have a nice level board. Yes.
Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to level all these frets. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this marker right here. And we're just going to go over the top of this fret here with a little bit of a marker. Make a little tiny marker line across the top of there. That's all we're doing. And what we want to do is we want to mark these so that we're going to take our sanding slash leveling beam over the top of this. And it's going to be nice and level. So we're going to go ahead and, and get all these marked, and then I'll show you how we level it. Alrighty, now that we've gotten all of our um, our fret tops marked with the marker, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our leveling beam here. We're going to take our leveling beam, which is basically just an old level that I cut off a little bit, and we put a piece of 600 sandpaper on there with some double-sided tape. And I've had this on there for a little while, so this is seen, but you know, this is, is getting kind of smooth and stuff, so it doesn't really cut a whole lot, and we don't want to cut a whole lot. We just want to take, we just want to mark, take that, that marker off the top of these frets, and when we, when we don't see any more marker, then we know that everything is nice and level. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to set this on here, and we're just going to go back and forth real nice and, and light and easy like. And we're going to do this until all the marker is off of there. Alrighty, we went ahead and leveled that all out real nice. And we got rid of all the marker and what we did is we looked at it with the magnifying glass. We just went over it like that and uh, checked to make sure they were all taken care of. Now one of the other things we're going to do too is we're going to take this leveling beam while we got it out here and we're just going to kind of get this edge just a little bit too. We want to kind of sand right over the edge a little bit with this. Now I don't want to be, I want to be careful not to get it on the paint or anything like that. But I do want to kind of just go along this edge real nice and easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, some, put my hand behind here so that I can get a little bit of... So I can push down a little bit. And I want to... I want to make it cut. There. That'll make for a real nice transition. And we'll do the same thing over on this side here. And it just makes for a real nice smooth transmission. Transition onto the fretboard. We just roll right over the edge like that. Alright. We're gonna give that the smoothness test. Oh yeah, it does, but it still needs a little bit of work. It still needs a little bit of work. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to crown these frets. Now, when we level them, we kind of flatten out the top of the fret. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a nice little fine point on the top of this. And for that, we use our crowning tool here. So we're just going to take this and we're going to go ahead and go over the top of these now. A lot of times somebody might go ahead and put another layer of marker on there. You can if you want to. But I kind of do it by feel now, seeing that we've done it for quite a few times. So basically all you do is you take your, your fret tool and you want to just kind of go over the top of the fret. You want to rock back and forth. You want to try to make sure that you get the edge, get the corners. But you're just going to kind of and do that, you're going to go over that until you feel it get smooth. And I try to keep keep the fret in the middle of this because this it works a little bit better in the middle. So we're going to go and we're going to do that to all the frets all the way up and down the, the neck. Okay, we went over and we did all the frets. We got them all nice and, and uh, uh, pointed up there real nice. And now what we got to do is we got to get some good old sandpaper out here. And we're going to get some, some smooth stuff here. Let's see, what do I got here? Here, I got a piece of 600 right here. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with this old piece of 600. It's pretty old. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go over this a little bit. Just like this. We're just kind of, you know, I got, the, I got it rolled up sort of on the ball, so we're really not doing too much. We're just kind of going over it a little bit. One of the things that I like to do with this is I like to take this and I like to just kind of go over it this way. Because this is the way you're going to be sliding. So we're just going to get it just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit like that, okay? 
and then I'm going to get that size just a little bit too. Now we'll get the sides a little bit, the back side a little bit. And I'm going to stay away from the body and everything. I don't want to get in there. It's not really important to get up the nose. But these, not these smooth. You know, when you slide that paper pressure, you don't feel nothing. All right. We got that pretty good with what we got right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we'll move on to an even smoother piece of paper. It's this here. This is even smoother. It's some 1,000. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to kind of go over this with some 1,000 now. And I'm not putting any pressure on this whatsoever. We're just sort of going over the side a little bit too on this one. So just a little bit. We're just still trying to get it to be nice and smooth. I'm going to go this way over it. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to really, the, the, the point that I'm trying to get really nice and smooth, the part that I'm trying to get nice and smooth is the very top here. The part that we made a little point on. See this file right here, this file that we just filed the frets down, puts a little tiny, it takes that, that flat spot and just makes it real small. So it makes it a little tiny flat spot instead of a big wide flat spot. And that's what we're trying to get, get that little tiny flat spot. We're trying to get that nice and smooth. So when you bend a string, it feels effortless. See, we're just going over this real nice and easy. It's real nice and easy. I want it to be nice and super, 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 super smooth. Okay, now we're going to go to an even smoother piece of sandpaper. <clears throat> Here. here we go, we got a nice little piece of 1500. That's really, really smooth. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and just kind of go real smoothly. smooth as can be. This thing here is like the, nothing, nothing to it. Nothing to it. We're just going to kind of go real nice and gently with it. Feel that getting real smooth with this piece of paper right here because it's just there's there's nothing to it. There's nothing to this paper right here hardly. So we're polishing. That's what I'm trying to do. Just get that little that little point up on there. And you can tell they're already getting good and shiny. Okay, go ahead and did that. Now the next step, what what we're going to do is we're going to take some polishing compound right here some of this and we're just going to rub these frets down real 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 good with it so what we're going to do is we're going to get our, our sock here and we're going to just shake a little bottle we're going to put a little bit on the end of our sock right here end of our rag we're basically just going to take some of this and we're going to uh i'll be right back i gotta get my thing just one second okay we're back i just wanted to get my little fret guard see what this does is it you can set it right over the top of the fret here and now when I polish, I'm not polishing everything under the sun, just getting the frat. That's all I want to get. In fact, I think I'm going to use the bigger one down here. So you got a bigger one. So we just go like that. And I rub that all day long. You get right, and we only get the top of it. See? And then we'll move on down the road here. And we'll keep doing this to all the frets up and down until they're the most shiny as you can get them. 
Okay, after we give them a good polish with the chrome polish and stuff and the rag and stuff like that, then we're going to take the buffing wheel and we take that and we go right over the whole neck and just give it a good buffing. Alrighty, you can already see that that's getting to be really, really, really good and shiny. There, let's zoom in on that a little bit. You see? Oh. Anyway, there we go. Nice and shiny. Nice and shiny. Okay, we're gonna pull out. No, why not there? Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get myself a clean rag over here. Something that's not disgusting. This might be hard to buy. Aha! Here we go. Well, let's see. Let's come over here. Okay, got another clean sock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol. Some good old rubbing alcohol here. We're going to soak this rag down real good and some of that. And then I'm just going to wipe down this whole fretboard here real good. And we're going to go side to side here. I'm just going to get everything off there. Everything. Because it's disgusting. Okay. And one of the other things I want to do right now is I want to take my... A little plastic toothbrush here, and I got a little plastic brush here. What we're going to do is we're just going to go over these frets here and get all the gunk and junk out of there. You know, make sure all that stuff gets out of there. And we're not hurting the frets or anything. The frets are going to stay nice and smooth and polished. Just getting the junk out of there. We'll go ahead and do all that right there. We're going to get this fretboard all nice and cleaned up. We might even take a something and go right along in here, along these frets right here. Just make sure that we get all the little gunk and all that kind of good stuff out of there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to come back and we're going to sand out this fretboard just a little bit so it makes it feel a little bit smoother. All righty. Well, we got in all the little cracks and stuff like that around there. And we gave this, this fretboard a real good smooth with uh, sanding with the 1500 and man it sure does feel smooth it's just oh my gosh that's smooth, so smooth and then after that we were done with that we gave it a good wiping down with the um with the alcohol on a wipe now when i was wiping it i could feel that there was a little bit of snagging and stuff on here that when you got the rag on there it's a good time to feel if there's anything snagging or anything so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of dress down the ends of these press just a little bit with the with the file. I got a nice little small file right there and we're just gonna kinda go over the, the edge of this just a little bit just to kinda take it off so that it's not catching anymore. See that feels much better just that one right there. You can feel a little catch on it. Then you take that catch right off and it's just nice and smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to all of them on both sides all the way up and down. Be right back. Okay we went ahead and we did all the fret ends with the file and they are nice and rounded over and looking good. We did a good job with them. We just kind of went, ooh, just kind of, just want to kind of curve that edge over. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, you guys maybe thought we weren't going to do it, didn't you? <clears throat> and I know that's going to sound kind of funny, but we take this height gauge, and I like the height gauge because it's got a nice little sharp edge on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this sharp edge and we're going to roll this edge of this fretboard right here. Now, we're just going to kind of, we're going to see right here, we're just going to kind of scrape it along here a little bit and just kind of roll that over. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really doing anything. That just kind of scraping a little bit. Just kind of rolling it over. I want there to be a nice transition between the board and the finger and the, and the side here. I want it to be a nice, I don't want it to be a sharp edge. There 
there. You see, it's taking off just a little bit. This is called rolling the fingerboard. So we kind of start off flat on the fingerboard and we just kind of roll our way over. And this just adds to the comfort. And that's a little harder to get in down here on these lower frets, so you want to be careful. And we're going to do kind of do the same thing to the top up here. I like this because it just kind of makes it easier when you wrap your thumb around it. It's just more comfortable. And it's something that's really easy and quick to do, and it does make a big difference. I'm not going to worry about too much up in there because you can't really get up in there anyway. So, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to put it on our bag here. I need something that I don't have, so I will be right back. Give me two seconds. Okay, so what I needed is I needed this old Scotch Bright pad here. Now, it's not a fresh one, it's an older one. That's what I like. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of take the back of the neck here. We're just going to kind of go up and down like this. What I'm doing is I'm smoothing out the back of the neck, and I'm just making it comfortable. You know, this kind of helps cut a bit more smoothing things over, and I'll just kind of go like this with it too, okay? Okay, and that's that's basically all I want to do with it right there. You know, maybe we'll just go over the top of the fretboard a little bit, because this almost polishes, but I just want to be real nice and light with it. You can see this just sort of put a nice little, nice little polish on this. But we are not done by no means. Now, once we get up towards the body here, we want to be a little bit more careful, so that we don't wreck it. So see, we're just putting an extra little bit of shine on them on them frets. Okay. All right. Now that we're done with that, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our rag again, a little bit of alcohol. Not getting the guitar drunk, just getting the neck clean. The alcohol is for the player, right? <laughs> Maybe this will be in the hands of a rock star one day. Who knows? I know that it's going to be a nice guitar. It's going to be very fun. <laughs> Whoever has the, if you if you're watching this video saying this is your guitar, man, you know what I'm talking about. It's good to go. All right. Now I like using alcohol on this because it cleans all the nice and greasy grime and grump, grump off of it and it dries real fast. So next step we're going to do is we're going to take some of our good old fashioned coconut oil here. Now coconut oil is a really great thing for conditioning the, the neck and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take some of this and we're going to smudge it all over. I like it because it doesn't sink in real, real, real much but it does sink in some and it kind of stays on the surface a lot and it doesn't really soak down the oil. I'm not trying to get my wood all full of oil, you know. This ain't your old baseball glove. You don't want it all oiled down and, you know, slicky slick. No, uh -uh. it just gets soft. Just a little bit in there. See, we're rubbing it in real good with our finger. So I want to get it in all the good spots there, okay. Well, we've got some on there, nice little even coat. Now we're just going to take a, uh, another rag over here, got this one right here, and we're just going to wipe that off there. And you can see how much of a difference it makes already. It's getting to be nice and bright and shiny. Okay. All right, now we've got that nice and bright and shiny. I'm going to go this way with it too. And she's looking good, she's looking good, 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 good. Okay, let's go give it a let's give it a little wipe down the sides there too. Now we're gonna give it the old oh, oh, oh that's so smooth. SM Ood. Okay, now this is our next step. So kind of a kind of a funny step. This is wood. We put some oil on there to hydrate it. 
Now we're going to put something on there to seal it. And what better to seal wood than wax? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rag over here. And we're just going to put some good old-fashioned wax right in there. We're going to rub it in there real good. And we're going to take some of this. And we're just going to kind of go up and down this neck like that right there. We're going to put a nice good little th nice little coat of it on there. And then we'll let that dry. And then we'll come after it with the buffing wheel. And I'll tell you one thing, this wax smells good. It gives your, gives your guitar that, that new car smell. <laughs> so we're going to let this dry and we'll be right back and we'll buff it all off. Okay, while we were letting the, while we was letting the, the wax dry on the, on the neck here, we went ahead and we tightened up all the uh, nuts on the tuners, which were all loose, and we put the truss rod cover back on there. And we kind of just set the nut in there. You know, this got a nice bone nut in here, but we got to make sure that, that sucker is in there good. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the buffing wheel and we're going to go ahead and buff that out one more time. Stinking cord keeps getting in the way. Alrighty, we gave it a good portion. Oh my, 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 my. Look how smooth that is. Now we are going to just take our regular old, what well, I think I'm going to take a little damp rag here. Just kind of go over a little bit. Oh yeah, just kind of go over just a little bit over the sides here. And then we're going to take our one rag right here. Find a nice little clean side to it. We're just gonna kind of give this a nice little buffing, just a nice little polish and wipe down. Oh man, and it just feels so smooth. Just feels so smooth. And there you have it. That is a completely done neck. And for the final thing, we're just gonna give it the old. Oh, it's there's nothing. There's nothing. It's just, it's, Smooth like air. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take just a little bit of this uh, stuff here. Well, tell you what. Let me let me go find what I need. Just be right back. Well, okay. We uh, went ahead and we put the little glue on the bridge and stuff like that. So I think it's time for us to go ahead and put some new strings on this thing. So let's take the old strings off. Take them off the uh, tail piece here. I'm trying to get the uh, nothing in the tail piece. And I think I got a cluster, so I'm just going to cut them off. Mm, where's my cutters? There they are. And I'm just going to go to the garbage chute right back. Cut this off. Now we're free of our old strings. Now before we go putting our uh, new strings on there, what I want to do is I want to take just a little bit of toilet paper here, good old TP, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. We're going to do just a little bit of cleaning in the spots that we really can't get to too well once we get strings on it. Let everything be nice and clean and neat and looking good for the new owner of this beauty. Okay, I think we're going to come back over here a little bit. There we go. All right, that's better with our shot. 
Okay, we'll just clean this in there. And I took the magic uh, eraser over some of this stuff over the frets a little bit. I got a magic eraser, took it over the frets just a bit, and over these pickups. And boy, they sure did put a nice little shine on them. So we cleaned the par parts where we're going to put the stuff back on there. And where's my bridge at? Here's my bridge. I'm going to make sure that that's all looking good and everything's cool with that. Looks like it is. And we're going to get that back on there. But before we fool around with this, um, putting strings back on it, we are going to radius this bridge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do basically the same thing we did on the other stuff there. We're going to take the, uh, the radius tool and we're going to put it right across here and we're going to make sure that all these are perfectly right at the radius that they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and line them all up here. Probably just run them all forward or something like that. Or maybe we'll just line them all. Oh, we'll run them all forward. And we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's basically the same thing as on there. And if you have any high sides, you want to file it down a little bit so that it's all nice and even across there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run these out. We're going to go ahead and run these all out here. And we'll be right back. Alrighty, we went ahead and we um, radiused the up here, the, the bridge, I mean the saddle, right here, bridge, saddle, whatever you want to call it. And we made sure that the, well we just took a little little paper, a little sandpaper, and went in each one of those slots just kind of smoothed up so we're not going to have any problems with uh, string breakage or anything like that. Now let's find our tailpiece, oh yeah, here it is right up here. And we're going to get us some brand new strings. And in fact, we're going to go over this a little bit with the old, go over a little bit with the old magic eraser blast here, polish this stuff up real nice and quick. And this is the original bridge. It's good and solid. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, let's reach into the bag of magic over here. And then we're going to pull ourselves out. Ta da! A brand new pack of Ernie Ball 9342 Super Slinkies. That's the that's the official string of Mojo Shop guitar. So we're just gonna go ahead and open that up and get our strings out and start stringing this dog up. And I think we're gonna over wrap it, over you know, top wrap it. I guess you could say. So, we're going to go in like this, and we're going to go like this. You can get a little bit better tone out of it like that. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and stick this right on there like that. Whoops. 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 Get a little backwards here, Jack. There we go. Get on there right now, huh? Like I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put all the strings on this sucker right now. So, let's get the rest of them out. What am I doing them? Over here. Here they are, right here. Okay, let's get the rest of these on there. Start with our 32. Which was right next to the 42. Put that through there. And then our 24. I tell you what, we're, we're going to get this thing strung back up and we'll be right back. Alright, we got strings on it. Now the next step to do is to let's stretch these strings. We got to stretch them, we got to stretch them and stretch them some more. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this all tuned up. We've got my trusty, trusty tuner on here. And we're going to see. Right, we're just going to get them all ballpark. You know, we don't want to get too much tension on them right here. Okay. There we go. That's a G. A. A 
sharp B C C sharp D G sharp and we're coming up on E all right we're all in the neighborhood here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these strings and we're just gonna pick them up and we're just gonna stretch them a little bit you can see how I do that Maybe we're just tightening a little bit so we just take the string we'll put it in our hand like this we'll just sort of push it back and forth like that and we we'll do that to each string back and forth back and forth Ooh, you hear that right there that set in that was just that just made that that string set right in there something was up okay we're gonna do this to each one of these strings not getting too brutal with it or anything like that and then we're gonna take it and we're just gonna pull it up a little bit now what I did is I I set my string height just roughly so that we're gonna, so that we can go ahead and stretch these strings. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tune them up again. See that E went all the way down to C. And basically, what we do is we go through and we tune up each string and we stretch it. We get it, we get them all tuned and we stretch it. Then we go back and we tune it again and we stretch it. And we keep stretching and tuning and stretching and tuning until they don't stretch anymore. Till you stretch it and you go back and you go to tune it and it's still right there. It's still right there. Then, after that, you give it a couple more stretches. Just light stretches. And that should get you right where you're gonna, the strings are going to be stretched as far as they can and it'll stay in tune. So we're going to go ahead and finish stretching these strings. Okay, we're back. And basically what we just did is we went through the... Uh, control cavity here and we looped the pots got them all moving real nice I mean they were already moving nice but we didn't have to do much to them but just put a little oil in there and buttoned it up down here and gave the, the, the switch a little bit of oil too and I remember these are CTS pots in there and a switchcraft switched in there and a switchcraft uh, input jack over here in the back so we got that all buttoned up in the back there real nice and tight and we're going to flip it on over here, and we're going to take care of this front here, too. Okay, so we got our neck all nice right here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to check the relief that we have in the neck right now. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm just going to set my, um, let's see, where's my tools? Here we go. Give me my 10,000. There, 10,000. Okay, that's the amount of relief I want on this neck. So we're going to set this feeler gauge over there, our straight edge right across them. And we're going to check right underneath it like that. And there is not 10,000. That's why I had a little bit of buzzing. I had a little bit of... So what we're going to do is we're going to take a turn. We're going to turn the truss rod we're going to loosen the truss rod just a little bit. So we'll be right back after we do that. Okay, we got our relief, which is basically the bow of the neck. We got that just right. That should be ten thousandths. And that's what we got at right there. So got my ten thousandths. And she slips right underneath there just a little bit. At least it was. That's a little bit tight for my lichens, so we're going to take it off just a little bit more. And then what I do is I kind of grab it like this, I grab it behind the neck on this side, and I'll just kind of push down a little bit, because I'm just trying to get a little bit of a bend to the neck there a little bit. That's all I'm trying to do. It was too, it was too up like this, and I'm trying to get down like that. Can't you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, let's see what we got now. We got that on there, right? And we got a nice ten thousandths, as you can see. It 
slides. Get my big fat head out of the way. Slides right underneath there. No problem. So that should make it play a little, little, little bit better. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go through the neck. We're going to try to play all the notes, make sure nothing's choking out or anything like that. And uh, we're then we'll be right back. Okay, folks, we are back and we got this guitar perfectly in tune all the way up and down the neck. Now we're going to play the open notes. There's your E. And your A. We're going to get those just perfect. See those A hit right perfect. There's my E. Okay. Let's try this bottom. We're gonna do the the, the small E string first. C, C sharp, D, look at that, They're just hitting right on the nose. Alright, you know, this whole thing is a process, and I had it so it was playing all the way up and down the neck. And then when I go to tape it, I can show you, well, it's not playing all the way up and down. So we went back and we stretched the strings again, we get them all perfectly in tune, let's give it another shot here. Here's your E, your bottom E. F. F sharp. G. G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, E is just a tad bit high, isn't it? F right on the money. F sharp. Okay, maybe my intonation on the on the first string is just a little off. We're gonna have to check that again. There we got the B hitting right perfect. C. We're on the uh, the B string now. You know, you got when you're tuning it, you gotta wait for it to hear that just perfect harmonic. You'll, you'll hear it. And it pops right up there. See that? C, D sharp. E. F. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. See, they're all hitting right up perfect down up and down. Now let's try the G string. Okay, that's all perfect. Right there. G sharp. A. A sharp. B. C, hitting perfect. C sharp. D, hitting perfect. D 
sharp. So they're all playing real nice. Now let's try the D string. D sharp. E. F. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. A sharp. B. I can go on and on all the way up and down the neck. They're all going to play perfect. Here's your A. There's your B. C. C sharp. D. E. Everybody, everything hitting perfect. So let's try that open E. Pops right up. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. Look at that A pop up. Those root notes are going to be right dead on the money. Look at that. Who says it can't be done? Looks like every note on the guitar is playing perfectly the note. D right there. They're all right where they're supposed to be. Let me let it widen out this shot here now. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, let's lay this bad dog down. All right, we've got our proof. Proof is in the pudding here. We have a guitar. Okay, people, people, people. We have achieved our goal of getting a guitar that plays perfectly up and down the neck. No sharps, no flats, no problems. And that is what a guitar is supposed to do. It took probably six or seven times at least stretching the strings. It took getting the nut just just perfect. I had already cut this nut once before and I must have done a good job on it because I didn't really have to do just a little adjustments to it here and there. A couple of little little cuts is all I needed. It's getting that neck perfectly perfectly flat and, and, and leveled out. It's all the things that we did that, that make this fretboard play and and feel and, and play in completely in tune all the way up and down the neck. Every last one of these notes down here on this neck are going to play perfectly in tune. Every last one of them. We just proved it. So, the next thing that we have to do here is we have to set our pickup height. Now these are our new pickups and we're going to put these right at about two millimeters off the deck when we press down the string here. We're going to press down the string and we're going to stick this, this popsicle stick which I've already measured with the calipers and they are, it is exactly two millimeters. So we don't have two millimeters over here yet so we're going to raise this up a little bit. And then we'll see where we're at. We'll press down the end of the string. We've got just a little bit more to go. And you'll see when this when the pickup comes up, it'll kind of go, it'll kind of rock back and forth a little bit. So you want to kind of keep adjusting until it, <clears throat> it rocks itself back out flat. I'm just about there. And anytime you're over here messing around with the guitar with a screwdriver and stuff like that, you want to be careful. Make sure you don't, you know, touch anything. And we always are, because this is going to be your guitar. And this thing is getting set up with precision so that it plays perfectly. That right there is too... Well, we're going to put it up just a little bit because I don't feel it yet. Right there is perfect. Now, over this side, we're going to do the exact same thing. Bring it on up. A little bit more. And remember, we radiused these pickups. So the pickups 
should have read perfectly right with the I think just a little tiny 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 bit more that's perfect right there okay see what we've done basically is these strings are all per exactly the same height above this uh, above the post of the pickups the strings are exactly the same height above the post of the pickup so that when you play you play something it's gonna you're you're evenly you're in the even you're in the same part of the magnetic field so that you're gonna pick up the, the vibrations are all gonna get picked up exactly the same and it's gonna sound more harmonious so we're gonna come down here and we do this stream down here and of course it's got to come up about a mile so we're gonna take it up way up try that right there just about there and we're gonna go ahead and do this to this side and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side and then we will be right back well if you're the proud new owner of this guitar here I'll tell you one thing we've got a spot on now, I don't know if you're going to like the pit guard or not being back on it, but I think we're going to put the pit guard back on it. And we're going to clean it up. But I'll tell you one thing, I just gave it its first little play, and it plays smooth like butter. We already know that every last one of these notes plays perfectly in tune all the way up and down the neck. We got the pickups set just perfect. We got, them, we got the, the, the post radius. We have the saddle radius. It's perfectly the intonation is perfect. The the neck the neck and everything has been all nicely rolled. Just feels smooth like butter. These frets, I mean the, the strings just no noise. All you hear is string. The 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 fretboard is nice and smooth. You know, it, it just it's had everything done to it. It's got a nice bone nut in there. You know, the tuners are working just perfect. It needs a clean up and it's ready to go. It's ready to, it's ready for you. This if this if you purchase this guitar and this is your video, this is your guitar, then I know you're loving it right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna posh this all up and then we're gonna give it a little play, see what she sounds like. We'll be right back. All right, you know, we, we're we all done building her. She sounds good. We've done everything we can. We've done everything. And, well, here it is. Sure is beautiful, isn't it? Just look at that shine on there. Look at that. Look at that neck. I tell you what, how about we go over what we did on it? We'll start right at the very top here. First of all, we replaced the tuners that it came with with some nice little replica Grover tuners. So they got the little buttons at the bottom there. And they work real nice. They work real nice. You can adjust the screws on the end there so you can get the tension just right. Okay. Now, here at the top right here, this is a bone nut that we, I put in there when I first got it. And it's a solid bone nut. Okay. We Now we did everything known to man to the neck here. We went over. We rolled the edge all the way down we leveled it we crowned the frets we made it just as smooth as can be and this neck just feels like butter when you play it the notes bend just real nice and easy yeah I've already played it yeah the notes just bend it's just it, it it's a beautiful thing there's not a Les Paul out there that plays better than this one does and this isn't a Les Paul it's a hard bend but it got the modification process which makes it play just as good as any any guitar out there. Every last note on this fretboard plays perfectly in tune. You know, you get it tuned up up here, and it's tuned up down here, and it's tuned everywhere. So when you play a chord, you're playing a solo, it sounds nice and crisp and clean. So we've done, so there's, this, this neck is in just the, the best condition that it could ever be. Next thing we did is we switched the pickups out. 
we took these pickups that we had that came out of a Fender Tornado and they fit right in here no problem and anyway we turned the posts so that they are more towards the middle now I wanted this guitar to be a in the middle switch in the middle position at, at its strongest sound its best in the middle position here well I'm kind of over in the shadow ah, behind the guitar anyway um, so I put the post like that so that they're going to be like that. We also radius the post. Now the, the fingerboard has a 14 inch radius. So we took our radius gauge and we made sure that each one of these posts was right up to the radius gauge. So that they're all at a perfect 40, 14 degree radius. So they're exactly the same. Each string is exactly the same height above the post. So that the harmonic range is right in there and you know it's going to be in the same magnetic field is what I'm trying to say of the pickup so you get a nice even sound across the board so you do not no no big highs no big lows no no drops in the mid range everything comes through nice and smooth and even anyway we also have a switchcraft switch up here in the top here for our rhythm and treble switch okay we have CTS pots down here. Now we changed out the knobs and everything like that. So those are those are different knobs. We also have, I don't know if you can see it, but we have the little the little finger pointers right there, the little pointers on there. Which really makes a big difference. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more classy, you know? You got the little pointers on there. And we've top wrapped the strings. Oh, there's a little piece of paper on it. We top wrapped the strings right there. And we set the intonation perfect. We have the the height of the of the 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 pickup height is just right where it should be, and everything sounds good. And we've given it a chance to play it. I mean, I, I had a little chance to you know noodle around on it because that's what we do. We don't. I'm not going to sit here and show you if I haven't made sure that this thing is is where it, where it should be. If there's anything that doesn't feel right or doesn't sound right or isn't coming out right, we go back and we make sure that it does. So cause, so when you get it, it's as good as it's going to be. Now. We're going to strap this thing on, and we're going to give it a little bit of play in here. We're going to show you just how good it does sound. There we go. Did you hear all those notes ring out real nice and clear? I'm going to turn off the amp right now, or I'm just going to turn turn this down, and I want you to hear what it sounds like, just regular old harmonic. Play a G. It's very acoustic all by itself, but if we turn it up. We're in the middle of range right now. Hear that right now. Let's put it up on the rhythm. So that middle position is nice and full. Then we get down to that treble. So when you want to have a little bit of extra twang to it, you got a little bit extra. And I think it's a nice blend. So you can tell kind of hear the fenderness of that pickup in there, but it's in Les Paul land, which makes it sound even better, and then you got the, the way the pickups are configured, it's going to have a sound that no other Les Paul has. possession. Let's see what it sounds like in the middle. Now see this is where this guitar is supposed to be love and, love and life right in the middle here. So let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, that sounds pretty sweet. Let's see what we'll take. Let's turn the tone down just a little bit. 
put our tones at about at about seven. <laughs> Turn our tone down to about four. Here we got all kind of soft in it. All right, let's kick it all the way back up. Let's put it up in the uh, rhythm position. Effortless, effortless. 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 Yeah, she sounds good. And listen. Do you hear? Tiny little bit of hiss. Tiny. It's very, very quiet guitar. You can sit here and turn it off. You don't have you don't have to worry about walking away. It's gonna be going, you know, making all kinds of noises. And the thing about it is you can really kind of feel and hear the difference. It makes it makes a it makes a world of difference. So, you know what? I know that you're if this is your guitar and this is your video, you're a happy camper. Now, if you want to get a guitar that's like this, you know, or you want to have your guitar done, or you want a guitar, you know, you want some of you want to get your guitar mojo fied, you know, just we're gonna put our, our our information right there so you can get in contact with us, and man, we can make you anything you want. So, if you want to get your guitar mojo fied and get it sound good like this, or you'd like to own one of these guitars that we do, just contact us, and we'll be more than happy to take good care of you. So. Let's hear a little bit more of this beautiful thing. How about we try it with a little bit of distortion on it? What do you say? Watching Mojo Shop Guitar. Please like.